season, 1994-95, GM Vauxhall Conference finishing 8th, FA Cup 2nd round, FA Trophy 1st round. This was a make or break season for Halifax Town and the directors knew it. They had laid their cards on the table, made money available for new players and hoped that the gamble would pay off. If it did not and Town failed to win the conference then the consequences were set to be catastrophic. The one big surprise during the summer was the departure of Billy Barr to Crewe. Most people reckoned he would stay at Halifax throughout his playing career, but when the opportunity arose, he could not resist moving back into the big time. Others on their way were Sean Constable and Kevin Megson, but there would be no shortage of newcomers to the share for the new season. The list was so long it could almost have filled a telephone directory. They included Andy Flounders, Dave Lancaster, who cost £10,000, 2,000 of which was met by the supporters club who had organised a sign a striker appeal, Andy Kawamia, Grant Leach, Lee Fowler and much travelled Gary Worthington, some of, son of former player Dave. After six games, Town were unbeaten, thereby setting a welcome club record for the start of the season. Town had got off to a flyer with a 3-1 win at Woking, despite playing over half the match without the dismissed David German. Other fine performances had seen them beat Bromsgrove 4-2 and Southport 2-0, both at the Shea. Town went 6th, three points behind the leaders. Home defeat by conference newcomers Farnborough was a low. Town could have gone second in the table, but this was the start of an inconsistent spell. On the other hand, they beat Dagenham 4-1 away and Bath 4-2. Whilst on the other, they lost abysmally at Southport 4-0. At the end of October, Town had dropped to 10th. The club had been banking on big support, but the fans were staying away, perhaps sensing that the title was already out of their reach. Town's 6-0 win over Stafford's Rangers was watched by just 750. What the club needed was a good run in the FA Cup. For the first time since 1923, Town had to survive a qualifying round. It was played on the 22nd of October, the earliest Town had competed in the competition since their pre-football league days. At least they have the satisfaction of seeing off the challenge of Lancaster City winning 3-1 at the Shea. Runcorn presented stiffer opposition in the first round proper, but after drawing at the Shea, Town, with Colin Lambert outstanding, won the, three play, the replay 3-1 after extra time. That replay was staged at Witten Albion's Winsham Park, fire having gutted part of Runcorn's Canal Street ground. Two old favourites had reappeared at the club, Dean Martin on loan from Scunthorpe United and fullback Paul Fleming, though neither played against Mansfield at the Shea in round two. Martin's clearance had not come through, whilst Fleming was cup tied, having played as a substitute for Geisley earlier in the competition. Without these players, Town were held to a nil-nil draw. Jamie Patterson was not around for the replay. On the 11th of December, he made what was viewed at the time as a dream move, signing for Scottish Premier League outfit Falkirk for £40,000. With Graham Taylor's Wolves awaiting the winners, the Shea men lost a replay at Field Mill 1-2, falling to Paul Holland's injury time goal after late Dave Lancaster had put Town ahead in the first half. At least the FA Cup had provided a welcome distraction from the rigours of conference football. Not so welcome were other distractions, such as the future of the Shea itself. In mid-November, plans were submitted to Calderdale Council by the Yorkshire Rider Bus Company for a supermarket at the Shea. On the 18th of November, Jim Brown threatened to quit as chairman if the, if the council failed to improve plans for ground improvements. Approve plans for ground improvements. New Football League regulations meant the winners of the conference would only be promoted if their ground was deemed suitable. This precipitated an intense debate in Halifax as to the best site for a super stadium. Correspondence in the evening courier ran for weeks with proposal, proposals for upgrading the share and Halifax RLFC's from hall presented. In January 1995, the council backed Frum Hall as the site of a new super stadium. Halifax Town's board locked themselves in talks with their rugby counterparts to try and drive the plans to fruition. With the Shea Frum Hall debate in full flow, Town tried to put their title hopes back on track. A 2-1 win at Gateshead was their fourth game unbeaten, and following defeat at Altrincham on New Year's Eve, they won their next four matches to go fifth. Despite signing centre-back Mick Trotter at the end of December, Town slipped embarrassingly out of the FA Trophy at Bamber Bridge, a club that was playing Parks football only a few years earlier. Town were then found wanting in the league against Lowly Dagenham and Merthyr, both of whom left the Shea with a point. 
On the night that Town threw away two home points against Dagenham, councillors were wo- voting down the proposed shopping development of the share by the Yorkshire Rider. As Jim Brown backed plans for a move to Frum Hall, the sale of the share was the only way to finance a super stadium. With those plans now thrown out of the window, the chairman saw no alternative but to quit and did so on the 27th of Janu- uh, February, thus ending a period of more than six years at the helm. Having realistically lost all both on promotion and a new ground, and with the financial financial news tightening, town now had also lost their chairman. On the 6th of March, Brighouse textile owner John Stockwell took over the chairmanship, with Brian Bolton stepping up to vice chairman. The following day, town lost a crucial fixture with runaway conference leaders Macclesfield. Town had hoped to catch them, but after the 1-0 defeat, they gave up the ghost. Promotion took a back seat to survival. Dave Lancaster moved to Bury, Andy Kawami was shortly sold to Scunthorpe, and Lee Fowler released to Telford. Assistant manager Mick Rathbone, too, was surplus to requirements. John Bird described Rathbone's sacking as the hardest decision I have ever had to make. On the 15th of March, Halifax Town received a tax bill of £100,000 and a total debt of £175,000. Accountants advised the club to go into voluntary liquidation. The club vowed to see the present season out. After that, no one could quite be sure. Despite losing 5-1 at Kettering, Town recovered well to beat well in 4-0 and actually climbed to third place following a goalless draw at Bath. New players included goalkeeper Stuart Ford, on loan from Scarborough, Simon Johnson, who would later join from Amthorpe Welfare, but off-field dramas affected the team. Town went six games without a win and with the future of the club looking ever more unlikely, Financial backers were called upon to help save the club. John Stockwell announced that unless something turned up, town would fold at the end of the season. The final home game against Kidderminster Harriers on the 29th of April was actually billed as town's last ever game at the Shea, and following the 1-2 defeat, hundreds of fans poured onto the pitch to plead for the club to be saved. A fighting fund was set up, and Stockwell urged supporters to attend a critical meeting three days later. On the 2nd of May, around 250 supporters rolled up at Arden Road Social Club, where they did their bit to secure the club's future. Stockwell announced that an initial target of £30,000 for the inland revenue had to be found immediately. Half of that money had already been raised, but amid astonishing scenes, a further £15,000 was raised by supporters on that one night, and Stockwell knew he had bought the club a little more time. Halifax travelled to Runcorn for their last match of the season, Following a 3-0 win, Dave Hansen netted his first senior hat-trick. The fans streamed onto the pitch chanting, they'll always be the share men. It was inconceivable to think that the club could wrap up, but though the Wolves had been kept from the door, there was still much work to be done. The club then hit by, was hit by a further crisis. The Vauxhall Conference demanded a £75,000 bond, money Halifax Town did not have, if they were to take their place the following season. Now, not only did the club have to find the money to pay off existing debts, John Stockwell also had to do some smooth talking to ensure the club had a league to play in, should they still be around.